Lawrence. I'm Jasmine. And so we're gonna start today by talking about earthly greenness, healthy wellness. Yeah, going green. And give you guys tips about sustaining wellness and health and keeping the earth clean healthy. Yeah, because I mean, we're all on this floating rock in space together, so we might as well try to cultivate it for the better. Exactly. Um, well, actually, let's talk about wellness. Um, a few things that you can do to generally be more well or improve your wellness is definitely try to be outside more. Um, I really like to go on hikes um like at national parks and stuff like that just being outside with your friends i feel like is such a like a great like i mean i know with like winter you know what i mean like it's not as easy to be mm -hmm. outside with your friends but like still like there are winter sports there are things that you can do outside um but especially every other season of the year um like it's a perfect opportunity to do something to better the community with your friends, whether it be like just raking leaves or even planting a tree, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? There's there's a, 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 a tons of things that you can do right exactly. now. Exactly. Like, I feel like wellness, it has to do with you, dealing with yourself on mm -hmm. the inside and you also obviously dealing with everybody else. Mm -hmm. So one thing you could do for yourself is, um, well, this is to actually help both people. Mm -hmm. You could say something positive. Make sure mm. you say something positive and think about it. Because sometimes we don't really think to right. say, you know, to say something just going to make someone smile. Right. That actually helps you and your and, and other people to Absolutely. smile, you know. Because someone would, like, give me a compliment. And that would make me smile for the rest of the day. Just thinking about not, not that they... Um, made me feel validated about myself mm -hmm. but because knowing that there are people out there that are just nice for no reason you know just because yeah. that's who they are it's very rare and i mean like sometimes people are thrown aback by it because mm -hmm. they're like this person is acting like they exactly. care about me yeah. what's going on you know but it's, it's like crazy. you have to like i i firmly believe in like the idea of like duality and the idea of paying forward you mm -hmm. know what i mean so like if you want to receive love or receive respect you have to give that first if somebody d declines your respect or declines your love it says more about them that it's ever going to say about you exactly. you know you could be so focused on ourself and everything we go we're going through because we have a lot of things you know everyone has their own problems mm -hmm. and situations we have to sometimes take a step back and think about to actually give a compliment or to say something positive something that can help someone else you know? yeah because i mean go putting that way. positive energy into the universe like it just colors your world positively mm -hmm. exactly and speaking of energy another thing you could do for wellness is meditating Ooh. and different there's two ways i meditate i do deep breathing mm -hmm. deep breathing is when i um breathe the correct way you should see your stomach um expanding you know the air is going and when you breathe in your stomach should be expanding right and i don't do the um um no, i don't make noise i'm really quiet it could be anywhere i could mm -hmm. be literally sitting on a bus a public bus and train I just, uh, anything if i get too anxious i just do some deep breathing yeah. and it helps so much Another thing that my mother's doctor actually told her to do mm -hmm. is close your eyes and he visualizes, you know, you just see all black when you close your eyes. Uh -huh. He visualizes a, a white circle, a small circle. Doesn't make any noise, mm -hmm. but just visualizes looking through that circle. Wow. I've never, I've never tried something like that, but I have tried like focusing on like the color of something. So mm -hmm. let's say like you're on a bus and you see like the little like yellow, like like the thing that you press mm -hmm. and you just focus on that color and you think about like all the things that that color makes you feel, you know? Wow. I think that that's like really <gasps> I'm cool. I'm going to try that. that's how you center yourself. I think it's really cool. I like that. Yeah. Um, also, I mean in accordance with energy, turning off the lights when you leave the mm. room. That's actually really important, not I only for it. your environment, but um, just for yourself, just to conserve energy. Um, and I mean, it's better off for you because your light bill is going to be lower, which is yeah. awesome, saving money. Um, also, ditching plastic bags and plastic water bottles. This is my vice. Um, it's so hard for me because like I love the convenience of a plastic water bottle where like once you're done with it If you want to refill it you can but if you want to recycle it and don't want to carry it around anymore That's your option too. Um, you can get like um, what was it not recyclable but reusable water bottles aluminum I believe is the best um, I still carry around a plastic one because it's lighter I Still mm -hmm. have those problems, but aluminum is probably best just because it contaminates your water the least um, Obviously regularly wash your water bottles and stuff like that. Do not put them in in the dishwasher. I don't even have a dishwasher, so mm -hmm. I don't have that problem. But do not put any plastic bottles in the dishwasher because it only like makes it worse uh, in terms of chemical contamination mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and I mean, speaking of water bottles, you should always carry around water because I mean, it, it rejuvenates your skin. It's good for your skin. Rejuvenates your skin, mm -hmm. keeps you fuller for longer. Um, definitely like 
flushes out toxins like it it's a be all end all cure all. I drink like at least like a liter, a liter and a half of water a day. Um, I feel like that's the recommended. It's, it's nine, nine glasses. glasses. Yeah. Now it's up to nine glasses for women. I think it's maybe 10 glasses for men. Um, and I mean, like if you feel like your, your skin is breaking out, if you feel like you're gaining weight and stuff like that, drink water, you know what people I mean? Really but, but you have to be consistent with it. Absolutely. I, I've heard a lot of stories of people literally would drink water straight for 30 days and you could see huge, um, huge change. Crazy. It's crazy. And their vision, and their mood, wow. and their skin. Yeah. So I need to really get to that and actually try it out. Yeah. I mean, it's not easy. It's not an easy task to like consciously drink water. But if you do a little bit more at a time, like it makes the the whites of your eyes brighter, so it makes you look more awake. Like little things like that that you might not notice, that you might not realize about yourself. Like it could all be solved mm -hmm. with water. Yeah, I mean, let's try it out. We should do a challenge. I try. Challenge. Oh my gosh, we should try to carry like those gallons. If you guys could do it with us, we'll post it on the Facebook fan spot page and Definitely. see. Let's try to do that. We'll try to do that. <laughs> okay, also with water, make sure you turn it off when you're brushing your teeth. Yes. And, stuff. and you're washing dishes, turn it off when you're not using it because that's my habit. Yeah. So we need to start that. Also, buy organic. Yes. Because a lot of the um, products, like, you know, our vegetables and our fruits, they're used with um, unnatural mm -hmm. pesticides and mm -hmm. these chemicals that are still And, on like, it. preservatives that aren't good for your yeah, body. Yeah, synthetic preservatives. So, buy organic, grow your own food, and, you know, create, it's start a garden. It's very possible, very possible. Start a garden in your backyard to grow your own food. I mean, you don't have to worry about any, because there's chemicals that's used to um, create a shine in your fruit that they st it's not supposed to be harmful mm -hmm. but you know there are always long term effects of things Absolutely. and people you know people try to scratch it off or clean it you could buy a um, fruit cleaner to clean it off mm -hmm. I use yeah like, like definitely rinse your fruits and like your vegetables before you eat them because that's actually kind of my problem I never do that because mm -hmm. I'm just like ah fruit I'm just gonna take it and run mm -hmm. but I mean like she said like important pesticides or Har not harmful pesticides can be found on those things so i mean just like rinse them i mean obviously don't use soap i mean if you feel that strongly about it definitely get fruit cleaner mm -hmm. and stuff like that um but i mean definitely eat organic i'm trying to eat more organic or just more fresh foods mm -hmm. just because it's better for you in general like it makes you, you feel what better. things do you usually eat um i've been trying to eat like a salad a salad one mm -hmm. salad every day for like i lunch. do that that's yeah. my family i make a big salad either me and my mother will make a huge salad mm -hmm. in the white bowl let me tell you how to easily make a salad because it seems like okay, I don't feel like preparing one. Mm -hmm. You get a big bowl, mm -hmm. put your lettuce, your greens, what type, whatever type of greens you I want use in there, and chop up everything. Put it all in a bowl and get a nice big spoon and mix it up. Because mm. you know sometimes you're like, I want to make one small salad for myself. Mm -hmm. You make a big one. I'm telling you, you'll be like, okay, I'm mm. making this every day. Yeah, yeah. I'll think about that because I mean I just make one and put it in like a Tupperware for school. Mm -hmm. But I mean like it's always a problem because it's like everything is laid out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it's like it should be mixed because it can't just be like chicken is on the top. Tomatoes oh, on the bottom. Shake yeah. it up. That's what yeah. I do. Yeah. I'll put the dressing in. I'll take it. I'll put the cover on the Tupperware, and I'll literally shake mm -hmm. it up, and it gets so mixed with the dressing, it tastes mm. delicious. You can try that. Tips, tips. Um, but also, we did want to talk about global warming. Global warming? Okay. So, you guys, global warming is the gradual increase of our Earth's temperature, you know, due to um, the atmosphere, um, the the temperature of the atmosphere and the oceans increasing that's affecting animals that's affecting us our future mm -hmm. you know because there are animals like polar bears who have a certain environment that they're used to it's getting destroyed mm -hmm. because of the polar polar ice caps that are melting from mm -hmm. global warming so what happens is the animals that are usually um fish off of it they're the fish can't survive in that climate so because no. it's too warm mm -hmm. so there's a decrease of the fish population also they're drowning in the water wow. so there's been a decrease in um, polar bears lip, um, life expansion because they can't get to the food it's literally like you would think that they can might be able to uh, swim mm -hmm. like but they can't wow. so there's been because um, of the temperatures yeah interesting there has been um, a reoccurrence of polar bears drowning because they've been swimming for miles, miles, wow. and for hours long until they before they could get to another polar ice cap or before they could get to land. Wow, and that that's ridiculous. So things we could do for that is really trying to. I know it's hard because we all drive, but though, but um, CO two emissions that's going into the atmosphere really uh, affect global warming. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a lot of people are actually saying that nature um, and animals in particular are more contribute uh, contribute more CO two emissions than humans would. Um, I think that they're th they're thinking mainly the methane That's gas that thing? Um, yeah, like methane gas that comes from cows. Um, and I mean, like 
we can't necessarily stop cows from producing any methane gas, but I feel like if we try to consciously close or minimize our um, carbon footprint, like that could be something that not necessarily decreases like our will to live you know mm -hmm. what i mean it doesn't hurt us to try to be more beneficial to drive this environment drive a bike when it's warm out i mean drive a bike ride a bike when it's warm out and that's good exercise mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. hashtag wellness mm -hmm. okay i mean the sea levels have risen for more than 20 centimeters since 1880 mm -hmm. and since 1993 it has risen three millimeters per year mm -hmm. so that's 30 centimeters per century Wow. So just to give you some statistics. Also, Person the thermal true. expansion of the oceans, um, loss of ice from the glaciers, um, there it has really made like an impact on more animals other than polar bears, mm. other animals. Mm -hmm. So it's not just glaciers, it's also problems with drought. Interesting. So in certain places where we need, where it's like a drought, mm -hmm. there, you know how there's animals who need to sustain from having glaciers mm -hmm. and there's animals who need to sustain from having a drought. That can affect us later on mm -hmm. because we have nowhere to grow crops. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. I never thought about it like that. I mean, a lot of people are saying that like there's been records amounts of ice and snow and colds. Um, and I mean, so... I feel like it's being reversed then, is what you're saying. So it's basically like, because it's getting so warm in these places that should typically be colder, it's gonna get cold in the places that are typically warmer. Um, no, well, I don't think drastically, mm -hmm. but where the animals who actually live in, a cold, in cold environments, they will be affected, definitely. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'll be a, a whole, uh, a 50 50 like a switch up right i don't think it would be a whole switch up but the droughts they're um more statistics they could drive 90 percent of the central u.s wetlands wow so this eliminates essential breeding grounds for the animals that do live there right yeah oh my goodness well i mean we just gotta be more conscious of what we do and how we do it you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i mean i understand like driving is like convenient gas emissions are a convenient having a generator that works on gas is convenient all these things but i mean at the expense of our earth is it really that convenient you know what i mean i feel like we should definitely be moving more towards electric cars um there's actually teslas um which are 100 100 percent electric cars inspired and um basically created because of my favorite scientist ever, Nikola Tesla. He was awesome. Um, he basically um, improved the whole idea of like AC and DC currents and stuff like that, that um, Thomas Edison actually like stole a lot of his ideas from him and then kicked him out because he was foreign. And um, <laughs> just saying, Nikola Tesla was the one true bay, so never forget about him. Um, I mean, I feel like the only problem with electric cars is that it's not accessible to charge them anywhere. You know what I mean? Like people's houses aren't wired to have those like plug-in adapters yet. Like every yeah, every like five like gas pumps, you have like one electric car like plug-in. Mm -hmm. I know that at my school we definitely try to go green and are trying to benefit the environment um, because we do have a very large science program. So we do actually have like carts for um, administration and staff that are electric pay electric based and electric powered. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very rare to see them being in use in my opinion. Um, so I feel like we should definitely be making a shift that way to electric cars because electricity can be generated through water. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Through like wind turbines, through solar power. There's so many different ways that we can cultivate energy. Even in the studio right now, like we have like three lights on us. You know what I mean? And that's cultivated by wind turbines, solar energy, all of those things, water energy. And like if that can be used as opposed to gases that are, or oils that are eventually going to like die out, I think that that would be more of a smarter move. Exactly. Um, you could use solar panels on your house exactly mm -hmm. for heating, you know. I've actually seen that before. Like that. Instead of using portable heaters and everything like that, just mm -hmm. um, maintaining um, a healthier, more preservative lifestyle altogether, if we all do it, could make an impact. I think it would just take all of us. Yeah. I mean, a lot I of know, people don't want to do that because they're comfortable. Exactly. Like eating healthy, eating healthier, more organic, growing your own food instead of eating meat. I know we all love meat. Yeah. I've actually been eating less meat for about three years now. I want to hopefully one day go vegan, but... Right. And how does that make you feel? Like, how do you feel without meat in your life most of the time? It's so funny because 
it's been such a while i don't see a complete difference but if i do eat meat i know i feel so mm. full and if you eat a lot of fruits you'll get more full than if you eat one piece of meat you know yeah that's true so, or plus, like you'll be fuller for longer yeah and it's a lot of money to even produce and even take care of animals and farm animals mm -hmm. for meat production. The industry, they spend millions and millions and millions of dollars on it. And they also do like forcefully inseminate animals, um, which is basically like, I feel like the meat industry, you can kind of say that they are a proponent for animal rape, which is really unsettling. Uh, I never thought about it like that until I recently heard this. And I was just like, wow, like... How and, so? Because, I mean, they artificially inseminate these animals so that they can create more animals so that mm -hmm. we can eat them. You know what I mean? Like, like when they stick their whole arm in yeah, the cow behind. Like they're not letting these animals procreate the Ugh. way that they're intended to. You know what I mean? Think about yourself. If somebody did that to you just so that your child can be taken mm -hmm. away and used. And you know that's what I mean? why I can't, uh, that's, why, that's why I'm against it. Mostly mm -hmm. because of animals' welfare, not even because of how it makes me feel. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I already, I grew up eating a lot of vegetables anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really disgusting. I've seen these, um, political cartoons about it actually. Mm. It really made a huge impact already on me, even though I'm already eating, um, a lot of greens. Where it showed the animals and the cows as humans. Oh, God. You know, as the, the mom's milk, the moms that were just, that just, um, had a baby uh -huh. they're breastfeeding but their milk was being pumped out and it, oh, wow. animals, it's, it's, it's and also hilarious. i was actually um I mean, look at it that way what was it i was actually thinking about milk lately and how like basically like those like nutrients in milk are to make a baby calf as big and as heavy and as large as possible so i mean putting those nutrients into a human body doesn't really seem productive for health and wellness because of the fact that like we aren't cows so why are we going to try to like and yet there's this there's this like focus on being skinny and being healthy and being fit and most people who are skinny and healthy and fit do not drink cow's milk whatsoever exactly i i don't drink cow's milk cow's milk has pus and it has blood in it. it's like disgusting oh my god yes you can look I actually didn't cow's know. milk Yes, I mean, I really like definitely. almond milk. I drink almond, almond milk. milk is great. And you can make it milk. at home. You yes. can make almond milk at home if you just put like a ton of almonds in like um, like a little mason jar and then just add water. Mm -hmm. um, and then after a few days, it kind of sits there um, and it diffuses and then you can just strain it and you have almond milk that you can use for, I believe, about two weeks, but I'm not sure. It's funny, there's many alternatives for milk. Yeah. I mean, and I loved vanilla almond milk. Mm, it's so good. So good. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of different things. And it's not good for your skin either. You shouldn't be drinking certain things, you know. Water is the best. I don't drink juice. Water is the best. I love I mean, juice. Other things that you could use also for your skin to, where you can see a difference, mm -hmm. and that's natural, are, you know, certain skincare products. You mm -hmm. can get rid of some that work on animals, mm -hmm. you know, test on animals, and that just really clog your pores. Like Sprout Skin Care mm. by Adina Grigor. She uses all natural skin um, creams, and she makes body scrubs. Wow. All natural. That's also... Really cool. Um, Kush Cosmetics by Tony Hall Parker. She makes natural skincare and she has hair, a hair care line mm -hmm. which uses products that are strictly made from botanicals and essential oils. You know, I love essential oils. Yes. I did the reviews on that. Yes. So. I actually um, was reading online how, um, like, washing your face with oils just to like balance it which i thought was actually very interesting because i was like oh my god like putting oil on your face like that yeah. fe feels like it seems like it's just like breakout city but actually if you wash your face with olive oil um and maybe a little bit of uh lavender uh, lavender extract um it has a great smell to it and it also balances the oils that are in your skin because when you don't moisturize your skin your skin is going to overproduce oils to compensate for that that's why it's so important to wear sunscreen that's why it's important to wear moisturizer sunscreen yes oh sunscreen because of the fact that if you have like acne scars they're going to get darker in the sun yeah especially if you have a, a high um production of hyperpigmentation absolutely your skin which is mainly in. found in darker skins mm -hmm. to be honest um, and sunscreen is really good no matter what shade you are too because people that's another thing if you think just because you're black yeah or you're dark you a lot of people shade, think that you don't need to wear sunscreen it's protecting from uv rays yeah that's good. Um, um oils again what you said with the oils that is so good to do but it depends also whatever what the type of skin you have absolutely. so make sure guys if you have a, a, a you have a major production of oil already mm -hmm. don't use a oil that it um could clog your pores yeah like for example 
be careful with i would be careful with coconut oil mm -hmm. i use it but i put it on certain parts of my skin yeah i would only put it on a dry patch mm -hmm. or you can mix oils also mm -hmm. Anyways, very true do we have a mystery topic we still have this one Ten. Oh, well, we did want to talk about Stephen Ritz. Um, he's actually a teacher um, growing green in the Bronx, in South Bronx. Basically, he um, started the Green Bronx Machine. He started it in a school in the South Bronx, basically teaching his science classes how to grow their own crops, um, how to mass produce these crops to put them in supermarkets in their local area, basically bringing better food to the community because of the because of the low income area it's hard for them to get organic foods foods that are good for their bodies and stuff like that and it negatively affects you what you put in your body is what you get out of it and so he decided to start the green bronx movement and teach these kids i'm going to teach you like a trade of life you know what i mean i'm going to teach you how to grow your own food how to pr provide for yourself provide for your family provide for your community and I mean, this has been a, a growing, um, like a growing movement since about like, I want to say three to five years now. Um, they, all the food that they make and all the food that they um, harvest literally goes directly to the community and directly to supermarkets so that people in that area can actually benefit from it. They actually um, farm on people's front yards and the people mm -hmm. who the people whose front yards that those belong to they get a portion of those crops all for free you know what i mean and it's a give and take and it, it's a beautiful way of going organic because it d is directly affecting your community it's directly affecting your community for the better and mm -hmm. i mean i i think it's amazing That's i definitely awesome. want to go and see what they have in store mm -hmm. i've actually recently heard of people starting to um f well they've got um permission from their town that they could grow crops on their their front lawns mm -hmm. or even where you know the sidewalk of in front of the sidewalk wow. and that's awesome you know because we're places where you can't get to a local food market or farm or where even a healthy food store yeah you know or it's, sometimes it's too expensive you're teaching kids to grow their own crops and eat healthy i think that's awesome because you know there's certain areas where there every corner store store has junk food mm -hmm. the juice the one juice, right over here there's like the sandwiches the fruit, and like chips the corner stores are in or on every corner yeah. and there isn't a healthy food market for miles mm -hmm. and so they're going to avoid even going there because it's just too much and i think that's wrong yeah because when you go to you could go to manhattan you'll see a corner store but it's actually a health food store mm -hmm. and i love those i yeah. love those they have awesome food awesome snacks but it's more expensive as well because of the production and the fact that it has mm -hmm. to be it has to be brought in when you have it directly in your community you don't have to pay for travel you don't have to pay for preservatives if there are any at all you know mm -hmm. what i mean like it just makes more sense mm -hmm. and if we all ate more organic it will be cheaper to produce think about that mm -hmm. um also speaking about wellness and something that's definitely affecting our wellness i want to talk about the zika virus um mm -hmm. i don't know if many people have heard about this virus i've heard about it only because i've been in circles um, of people who have been traveling it has been found in several places in africa florida um it's basically contracted um through a mosquito's bite of uh, the Aedes mosquito species um, and it's linked to birth defects in infants so i mean Obviously, us being women, we care very much about that because if we were to want to be pregnant, that's something you have to prepare for. You know what I mean? You can't like, I mean, most a lot of people do just get pregnant like this. But if you want like the optimal health for your baby, you have to start taking the right nutrients, start eating correctly, stop smoking, stop consuming alcohol way in advance, like probably a year in advance. Um, the symptoms that are typically associated with the Zika virus are pain in the back of the eyes, joints and muscles, whole body fatigue, fever, chills, loss of appetite and sweats, eye redness, headaches, skin rashing, skin rashes and vomiting. Um, I mean, yeah. It's it's like it doesn't necessarily persist like for a long time like it it probably would leave in like probably a day to a week kind of like a fever like an enhanced fever but I mean they don't know for sure what time would be good for a woman to travel if she is, like if she is pregnant or if she is trying to get pregnant they don't know what it does to you or it does to your baby and what time that it could cease or what time that it can be vaccinated so i mean it's a lot of stuff that's up in the air and it's 
it has shown the defects in um, babies. You mm -hmm. see them with, coming out with a smaller head. Oh it's goodness. so sad you see the baby babies like that. And there's actually a point where their government was telling the moms to stop producing sad right. babies. In South America, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's just, I wouldn't say ridiculous because I could understand because you don't you want they want to stop treating babies who are having these problems mm -hmm. until the problems fixed because of, as of now there's no treatment or vaccine as available for the zika virus mm -hmm. so that's just sad i think it's like your know, mom should w want to be able to have a family a start a family what if she's at that age where okay i need to start creating a family and mm -hmm. there's no um there's no um no change or anything happening you don't see anything happening or any pro, um progression right a more information being found about it that's a scary thing mm -hmm. i mean i i hope that this resolves itself i mean i don't really hear anything except for it's been found in this place it's been found in this place it's you been found in this people place. not going to travel there either yeah and then like you're decreasing other people's quality of life because of something that can't like right now that could be controlled but there's nothing being done about it um but, I mean, be on the lookout for other places with mosquitoes. Because mm -hmm. I know right now in New York it's not really happening. But you never know. Um, Michael, do we have a mystery topic? What is the one thing that you wish everyone would do to save the environment? Just one, hmm. one act. Wow. Um, I think that I would want everyone to stop smoking cigarettes. I know that that's like a very big undertaking to ask. Um, but, I mean, cigarettes aren't good for anybody in the environment. Secondhand smoke actually, like, provides large numbers of people who have lung cancer, who have throat cancer and stuff like that. And, I mean, it also affects the people directly who are smoking, you know what I mean? Like, they have emphysema, things like that, blackened lungs. Um, and it's, it's, I feel like it'll help the community because it's less time that people are going to be littering. It's less time that people are going to be polluting the environment with toxins and carcinogens and stuff like that. Um, and I believe that we're the generation to do it. I think also my thing is the littering. It's a big problem. I know people think it's just quick just to dispose your garbage out on the street, put mm -hmm. it on the side when you park your car. Mm -hmm. But that is causing... Um, effects in animal growth. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll see turtles with plastic um, bottles, um, containers wrapped around their body and they've already grown to, you know, their full life, you know, yeah. body, body, um, yes. <laughs> as big as they as can. As big as they can grow, but then their waist is so small. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And also plastic debris, they cause deaths of more than 1 million seabirds and 100,000 marine animals every year. If you didn't know so, that. Stop littering, stop smoking. That's all the time that we have today. So we'll talk to you guys next week. And make sure you guys check out us on the Femspot Facebook page. See you guys later. Bye.